can stay right here we will play until somehow you can find a slightly different frame of mind right here in my arms away from all harm you'll be safe from all the flares although i know you don't care Take a deeper breath and give it time You can walk the path among the lines Everybody doing? Okay, we're good. I, I can press things, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on, Twitch crew? How is everybody tonight? Was Gucci, my homies? Are you ready Gucci. for some good conversations and topics being played on tonight? I think you should I'm be. I'm not. Well, you know, Muse doesn't have to, but I think you all should be because we have some hot, fatty topics to talk about tonight. We're talking about amazing things. But first... How fat? So fat, Santa can't fit it in his sack. Oh, snap. <laughs> Take it I in my like fat. I thought going to be able to fit down the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that too. But for introductions, Muse. I, uh, hi. Yeah. My name is Muse Shell. Joining me tonight is... John okay. McFluffin, a.k.a. Rambo. What is going on, guys? How are you all this evening? Those of you who do not know me, it literally is in my name, underscore, underscore, underscore. I am Rambo. <laughs> I'm a full-time variety broadcaster here tonight. I'm great to be here to talk about these amazing topics. 
So welcome everybody. He throws a few hellos out to chat. Jono, welcome. Baggy noodle arms. Hello, hello. Miss Mars Echelon. <laughs> what you're doing in the corner. My... I'm just saying hello to everyone. Okay, I'm just Serenian. happy. Angel Snowfall, run good, Yoshi. And yes, indeedy, uh, Sridian did do our overlay for us. Um, yes. All by hand, by the by. Yep. So. Really quick, really on top. And I asked him, I came in, I'm like, yo, I need something. Give it to me. He's like, I got you. Wham. I got you. Wham. <laughs> he, he brings it in like that. Hot topics. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you, Sridian. You are the bomb.com. Um, made it much like money. <laughs> See? Fast. Done. Done. Bet um, you, uh, didn't realize this was Sass Talk brought to you by Rambo. Um, hello? This is Sass R Us, Baggy. All right? If you haven't Sassarus. noticed, you haven't been to my it's, stream. It's, it's no longer Crew Talk. <laughs> it's, it's Sass, Sass R Us. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Okay. So we have some, we do have some good stuff to talk with you about today. Um, I'm blinding myself with my screen so I can remind myself what all we got going on in what order and all that mm -mm -mm. stuff. Um, we thought, since it's December and holiday season, that we would start off just kind of chatting um, about da, 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 Christmas tree, complete with candy cane and pops at the bottom, question mark? <laughs> no, it's just being hooked. <laughs> um, but yeah, what, what holidays do you all celebrate? What traditions do you have? Um... I know we have a lot of different people in the community who do different things. Some don't celebrate anything. Some have mixed traditions, mixed holidays. Uh, Rambo, what what do you and your family do? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we we uh we pretty much stay at home. We used to go and spend uh, Christmas Eve's over at a family friend's house, but we don't do that anymore. Now we pretty much just hang out at home. Um, and ha just enjoy each other's company. Normally, nice. We make like gingerbread cookies and whatnot because we're, we're traditional, traditional styles. We make homemade. Uh, pretty much wait until Christmas Day, hang out, have some breakfast, open some gifts, watch some movies, and then my sister comes over because uh, she spends Christmas Eve and Christmas morning at, with her family, and then she comes over to spend the time with us. So we pretty much we pretty much uh, just have it l l laid back. How about you? You've been very good. Well, before I had. So do you watch the same Christmas movies or do you like rotate out? Or is it like the same, same Christmas movies every year? If you know my mother, then it's the same. You want to tell everybody what it is? Uh, everyone knows what it is. Christmas story done. Hands down. <laughs> Christmas story. I, we just, we watch whatever it is. You know, there are certain times where we go and we, there, there's a horror movie even put in. Oh, we're weird. Oh. We're, we're a family of movies. There is no, genre mm -hmm. it's it's whatever we're in the mood in but hi keo what's going on avros there's a keo aviator nothing what? absolutely baggy absolutely nothing nothing <laughs> <laughs> we sit there You're like we sit there like pilgrims doing nothing we're like uh, you know that's never mind that's a whole nother thing uh doritos still never seen christmas story you should make that a new <gasps> holiday yourself, sir sir i, I will that. find you and I will make you watch it. It's not the greatest. It's not the greatest movie of all time, but it is a good one, and I think it's a movie you should see at least once. But it is ruined and washed by them playing it on and on on the television. That is what makes the movie ruined. Is overplaying. Movie night. Yes, movie night. Um, the bane of existence. Poor Mars. Mars knows. Um, my family tradition, so we just do Christmas. Um, what we do, well, we have a few different traditions. So we always set up the tree sometime after my birthday. Um, mm. Well, not always after my birthday. Sometimes it's before this year. Actually, it is before my birthday. I lied. I'm sorry. Um, I, I know. I saw the Snapchats. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think back. Thank you. <laughs> um, usually, like, mom does most of the tree decorating. Just there for moral support and to put the angel on top. I'm the only one that can reach. Um, you're, you're that cheerleader that sits in the back. You got this. Oh nice God. job. <laughs> hey, Dad, what are you doing? Hey, you're doing a great job. Keep it up, Ma. Pretty much. Put the fist up. Um, at some point before Christmas, we load up in the car and drive around town to look at the different Christmas decorations people have done. Um, that's always something we've always done. And when I was younger, you know, we'd sing Christmas carols and stuff in it in the car while we drove around. 
Nice. Um, but as far as like Christmas Day itself, Christmas Eve we'll usually do one gift, Christmas Eve, and then mm, we do that. Um, we do that too. And the next morning we have a cup of coffee and open the rest of the presents. We rotate around, and the dogs get tossed in there because they want involved. They get their own. They get to unwrap their own presents. Um, so, you know, it's, it's fun. Some, a couple of them actually get into opening their own packages. The other one could care less, but, um, Leia? Yeah, that's, that's what, we, exactly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but seeing so, uh, what's going on, burning trees, run good. Yoshi comes in saying, never seen it either. I just rewatched elf every Christmas, but you haven't watched the Christmas yeah. story, bro. But he's got a tradition. That's what we're talking well, about. Well, with the elf, oh. we, with the elf. Which is even better than a Christmas story. That's true. Because it's not um, overplayed. Gotta do your own decorating. Yeah, when you move out and like you're doing your own thing, that's just like suddenly it's like, mm, what do I do? This this tree right here is gonna be my tree for the next fifteen years. <laughs> I'm sorry for whoever you end up moving in with. <laughs> or just being by myself. <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> So, do you, um, any of you have any traditions that you'd like to share with us? What do you guys? Um, what do you guys do? What do you eat? What are like the main meals you guys have? What are the stuff? Do you guys open gifts? Ham? Yeah, we do ham. I love ham. Give I me know. some honey smoked ham. That's the face. I'll take it. I'll take it. Forever alone. <laughs> yes, Baggy, that's me. A loner, uh, and a loner's got to be alone. But what do you? What do you guys do? What are those? family traditions that you guys have or if you live alone are there certain traditions that you brought when you you were raised that you now that you do now like what what do you what do you guys do i want to know i want to know from 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 me to you i want to know he wants to know hi duke it's the lemon not, not a huge fan of will ferrell to be honest he just seems too childish yeah yeah but he was good in the elf he was all right <laughs> yo what's up duke your family opens half okay. of our gifts and stops for a giant breakfast. My dad cooks, then finish Ooh. presents. Oh, Very nice, very nice. Baggy Noodle Arm says they get together at the grandparents Christmas Eve every year and eat and open presents. Ooh. That's an awesome tradition, though. You say that's that's about it, but that's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's really awesome that you get to do that. Aviators Granny makes cornstarch custard. <gasps> never had cornstarch custard. I have to say I haven't either. I've had many custards, but I have not had cornstarch. But that is um, awesome. If you have that recipe, Aviator, you should put it in the food channel so that we can check that out. Just gonna throw that out there. Okay? Yosh. That would be awesome. <clears throat> awesome, awesome, awesome. But that that's fantastic. Even the small things, for some people it might not it might be just small or anything, but to those who celebrate it, it's so important and so meaningful. And it's it I love hearing about it. If you slap cornstarch and water, it hardens. Thank you so much, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Make some funny slap noise. <laughs> oh, bro. Little cabin. Grandpa bought two cabins for us to go to. That is way cool. That's awesome. Vacation for Christmas. That's we awesome. We stay at home. Same. We stay at we, home. So and, we stay at home family. and stare at the weather and just go, oh, snow. <laughs> we have to <laughs> shovel. Um... We we swap out for the family. So my aunt and um, my cousin will come over for Christmas and have lunch with us, and we'll do whatever. Um, we usually end up either Christmas, Thanksgiving, we go to her house, to my aunt's. Um, both places will end up playing train dominoes. Mm. So that's like our family thing to do whenever people get together. Jono says, Christmas morning, we have bacon, eggs, pancakes, strawberries, and more pancakes. Strawberries and pancakes. I'm just giving you crap. And then after breakfast, you dig into the present. So you wait until breakfast. That is some super uh, good restraint there. We don't. We're sitting there. We're like, I need it. <laughs> uh, What's going on, Korea? How you doing, my friend? Post a link. Much appreciated on my cornstarch custard. Heck yeah. Takes a few hours to make, but it's breakfast food and it's like a sweet, thick syrup crust toast. Mm. Yes, I need to check this out. Mm. I need to check this out. Thank you for sharing that. And if anybody has any awesome uh, recipes that they bring out for only for this type of year, please do share. Absolutely. Uh, this guy loves to cook. Um, and so I, I studied. <laughs> I studied all through school. Culinary was my main thing. I stopped doing that for gaming. <laughs> Yay! 
Yay! Now we're stuck with him. I'm just kidding. Um, Wilson, <laughs> welcome. Peace out. Bye, guys. It's just me just now. you know. Um, I'll see my way out. <laughs> so, John was hoping for a switch this year. Oh, that's a good question too. What is everybody hoping for this Christmas? Like, what? what John, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, rub it in. It's even on. What? It, it stays in sleep mode. Oh, okay. See, I don't have one, so and don't. Ah, gonna uh, you're one. gonna get one. Um. Anyway, we have, um, ooh, apple cinnamon French toast casserole this year. Oh, <gasps> baggy. I'll drive up to New Hampshire just to go have I, that. I, I'm going to come visit. I'll be there in about two hours or so, make, like, you know. <laughs> making quick, making me overly <laughs> without Rambo. Oh, uh, I love it. What is going on, Wilden <laughs> the Wizard? How are you? <laughs> hey. Your brother will be really easy to buy for this year. It's gonna have cornstarch and water. You want food coloring in it? Because then you can. We already like, have purple. We already have cornstarch. <laughs> um, green olives, feta, and herring. Same as Thanksgiving. Ooh. Naps, naps, and food. Keo says. Keo, I just, Keo, I wish I had. I wish need, I could sleep. You need your naps and food, girl. You mm -hmm. do. You do. Mm -hmm. ooh, um, ooh, Dorito. I like. So I like that. Just talking and chatting you'll see that it is just two of us tonight um i forgot to mention this when we did our intros because i'm so excited we skipped we things. skipped the intros and we went I straight to the business all right we get down to work <laughs> straight to the business we will starting in january have a third host with us uh and that will be none other than harry wizard gaming uh joining us um he's He'll unable to, me. to hang out until then that looks uh, so weird those who don't know like you're petting nothing. Uh, for those that don't know, Harry is a Good brand boy. new uncle to uh, Odin. Odin was just born yesterday. So, he wish is the a new god. Uncle, wish the new uncle well. Um, that he will be joining us, and he has lots of great topics and stuff that he wants to bring up regarding. Whenever you, whenever you guys join his stream, just say hi, Uncle Uncle Harry. Uncle Harry, you'll make him smile. It'll be good. Um, that's all you eat. Nothing else ever. Dorito, you just eat green olives, feta, and herring all the time. They're just for holidays. Are you Greek? I mean, you could be. <laughs> if so, that uh, works perfectly. <laughs> so coming soon with the show, um, we want to make this show interactive with chat. So we'll have a lot of tips and how-to still, um, but we need information input from you guys. So don't be afraid to let us know what you would like to hear about, things that you'd like to know. Um, and we want to have the communication. We want your feedback. You. I'm watching him out of the corner of my eye point at you. For those days. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So basically no tradition. You know, that's fine. That's totally fine. It would be amazing. I haven't had fish in a while. Mm -hmm. Um, so we've also <laughs> are rearranging. I keep getting distracted. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, we are going to swap around some of it. She was worried about uh, me. Order. I know. No, I really wasn't, actually. <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead and start off with some featured member spotlights. Um, because of the fact that we have taken a time off, and then we the start of On the Nines, which is, will be rotating, so next week we'll be On the Nines with Eddie Nines and his special guest, so stay, stay, stay tuned. Stay tuned to see what he's got going on and who he has hanging out. Um, Alrighty, Korea, have a good one, my friend. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for stopping behind. out. Stopping out? Stopping by. So we have um, two of our three featured member videos. We had a snafu, a technical snafu with one of them, uh, which is the first one, Ambush Man. He was our featured member a few weeks ago. Um, Shout out to Ambush it, Man. As soon as it behaves itself, we'll get that posted and share with you guys in the community and the Discord. Um, last week was Panzer. He is an awesome guy. If you don't know him, he's from Tunisia. So he's one of our international twitch crew members um and so we have a nice little featured member video that we'd like to share on him oh you mean you hit the button now got it all right here we go guys let's go enemy has a closet Okay, we need to be careful now. Uh, I don't 
got him. Oh, freaking dying. Ooh, I got him. Woo, mama. Alrighty. So big shout out to Panzer. He's uh you'll usually catch him in Discord early in the morning, uh in the afternoon before he heads out. Or late you know, late afternoon. Um he's a good dude and apparently loves to go woo a lot, which I love. Um Woo Reminds me of that WWE guy who literally just kept going, Woo! Woo! <laughs> <sighs> Yes, definitely, definitely check Panzer out. He's a sweet person, as Baggy says. Mm -hmm. uh, this week, speaking of sweet people, you can't get much sweeter than this week's future member. I'm a sweet source. like cotton candy. So we had the uh, the opportunity to meet her at TwitchCon. She's adorable. She gave She's me She's a genuine hug. human being. When I first met her, she was also on the Unnines. <laughs> John on, on the Nines last week. And... Uh, yeah, she's awesome. So here's her video celebrating her this week. Let's go. Hope you enjoy. Do your do your thickest traditional Canadian accent you can do. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ep is for friends who do stuff together. You is for you and me. And is for anywhere at any time at all, down here in the deep blue sea. Hurdling stuff makes noise. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know. What's what's your tie? I got dibs on the doctor, Kappa. Stop it. The doctor's mine. You <laughs> back off. Where is it? Stay still. I'm gonna cut you. <laughs> It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, did he really just? That's awesome. That is beautiful. She, oh man, love her to death. She's she's awesome. So if you don't know her either, and haven't followed her, do go give her a follow. NX came in during that time. Hello, Arl. How what are you? What is up, NX? Tio, you know, it's Rambo. But no, it's true. Genuine human being. She's she's just her. She's amazing and she's so full of love and kindness. So too pure for this world. That's the perfect way to put it. She's super, super pure. <laughs> she's amazing. So again, if you don't know these guys, do go follow them. You will also <laughs> We're We're dead. Dead in Dead by Daylight. Yes. Yes. You knows firsthand. Thank God I've retired from Dead by Daylight. <laughs> I'm now in a life of smash. <laughs> so talking about holidays and stuff, um, we talked a little bit about holiday movies, holiday movie traditions. Part of the awesome things with the holiday season is there's a lot of really awesome movies coming out. Rambo has uh, a list. He's so excited to share with all of you about stuff that's coming out soon, who's in it, what it's about, and uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, boys and girls. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and germs, how about that? I ain't a germ. <laughs> I'm a germ. These are these are movies. The ones that we're going to be talking about are movies that are coming out this month, and this month particularly. Certain movies that you might know, some of you actually might not know as well. Um, but overall, good movies to talk about and to be on the lookout that have already come out or are coming out. So first off, we're going to start off with by dates and everything. So we're going to start with the movies that already have come out um, and ones that are coming out. Uh, first off is this movie actually directed by Jose Rourke. Um, 
she made um, this movie called Mary, Queen of Scots, which is a true story about um, uh, blah, 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 blah. Mary Stewart's and Queen Elizabeth, all in uh, Mary Stewart's attempts to overthrow her co- uh, Queen Elizabeth, which actually was her cousin. Um, and during that time, obviously, she was the Queen of England. So this is a movie uh, telling that story in its own way. Um, certain actors or actresses you might know, uh, Margaret uh, Robbie, who she was, um, oh my God, Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Quinn. Um, from uh, Suicide Squad and whatnot. Uh, she's been in a lot of hit movies. And also, uh, Sioris Ronan. She, she hasn't been in a lot of two movies, a lot of small uh, st- standish movies, but not too bad. Uh, what's interesting about this movie, and what I like, is that the director, she has only been directing since 2012. She's relatively new, and the fact that she has a movie in 2018, six years later, coming out and just coming in, and came in theaters and whatnot, is outstanding. Is outstanding to me. Um, I don't know. Muse, I don't know if you saw the trailers or anything on them. Okay, full disclosure, I totally meant to watch all of the trailers and Mm -hmm. and didn't, so... Mm -hmm. Though, I did... You did share this one with me. I did watch um, this one because you're super excited about it, and it does look really interesting, so... um, It's now kind of more on my radar than it was before, at least. Absolutely. Uh, Have a good one, Baggy. Much love. Uh, the next one is actually called Ben is Back, uh, starring Julia Roberts, um, Lucas Hedges, which actually he is the son of the director of this movie, Peter Hedges. Um, uh, Peter Hedges is also known for um, About a Boy and making uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grapes, which most people know. That was Leonardo DiCaprio's role in that. He did an amazing job. Uh, this movie is about a drug-addicted teen um, who shows up unexpectedly at his family's home on Christmas Eve, and it's just a story of struggle and redemption and them trying to help him to be, you know, come back, and he starts telling certain truths about certain situations that have played. So it's it's a good movie, and it's cool ha- that the director has his son in it, and his son is the uh, drug-addicted teen in it um, who j- joins in and comes into the family, which, uh, to me, I just think um, is very impactful to do doing certain situations and families that deal with that stuff in real life. So it's very a hard topic to come by. So it's, it's nice that they're sure. having a movie that has it. Um, most people have heard of this, at least seen it on Instagram or anything. Dumplin. Dumplin is an w- interesting movie. Um, directed by Ann Fletcher. Um, Starring uh, Jennifer Aniston and Danielle uh, McDonald. Um, Danielle McDonald has not been in many movies. She's been in like some small type movies, um, like The East, which came out in 2013, and then Every Secret Thing, which came out um, in 2014. Um, but the movie is pretty much a story of this girl nicknamed Dumplin', actual name uh, Willa Dean. Um, She's a plus-size teenage daughter of a former beauty queen uh, mother. Uh, she signs up for her mo- mom's uh, Miss Teen Blue Bonnet uh, pageant as a uh, protest to- that escalates um, when other contestants follow her footsteps, revolutionizing the pageant in their small town, of, like in Texas. And it's stating about, you know, being small, being certain size, and everything doesn't really, like, matter. If you feel... Like, I think it's a story about, like, if you feel beautiful in your own skin or inside, that doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want or has a passion. So I, I, I like the movie. And I like Jennifer, Jennifer Aniston. And uh, Danielle McDonald does a really good job in it. Um, that, that also came out on the 7th. Um, so those are the movies That's that... Beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely. Those are the movies that have come out. Um, now, like, movies that... And... Uh, Rogue Dorito stated this, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse! A- everyone, everyone's Doctor excited Spider-Man. about this one. Um, directed by uh, Bob uh, Preschetti and uh, Peter Ramsey, uh, which is cool. Um, those of you who do not know the story, it's an animated movie about this kid, Miles Morales, who becomes Spider-Man on his real 
in his reality and crosses paths with counterparts from other dimensions to stop a threat to all reality. Um, so there's like characters like Gwen, she's her own Spider-Man. We got Peter Parker from, you know, who we all know playing as Spider-Man. Um, and it, it's, it's a cool Spider comedy Pig. and there's Spider-Pig who, by God, I don't understand. Geek, Geek what's going on? How we are you? We were just talking about you, pretty lady. We were saying things. Nice things, things, but things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the actor is in it. Um, the one who's playing Miles is Shamik Moore. Um, he's done a lot of stuff with Bob Perchetti. Um, Jack Johnson, who plays Peter and Haley Steinfeld, which actually is going to be in another movie that we're talking about uh, coming up. So that's one everyone's excited about. Um, Toby. You, slot's not even here to trigger, so you. Toby is number one <laughs> Spider Man. Prove me wrong. That's it, sir. We're going to fight. No. <laughs> There's no one here you can trigger except yourself. I think, well, maybe Geek. Maybe she Geek. Just... Toby is the worst. Um, excuse me. Toby Maguire is my favorite. It is. Yep. Stanley is. Yep. It'll be good. But. Uh, oh, the again. And next one after that, which is a sci-fi one called Mortal Engines. Um, I, I personally am interested in this because I want to see how Same. they do it. Um, it. Mortal Engines comes out on the 14th. Uh, it's directed by Christian uh, mm -hmm. Rivers. It is about this like, post-apocalyptic type world where major cities and capitals are on wheels. And it's just, just like chaos if you think about the carnage that was in um mad max uh fury road pretty much this but like 10 times bigger it's about a mysterious young woman named hester shaw she joins forces uh with this character anna fang which is um oh god i forget who she's played by i can't think of it right at this moment um but this character anna fang is a dangerous outlaw with a bounty on her head and then um and uh, Tom Natsworthy, the character, uh, and he, who's an outcast of London, and they're trying to rebel against London because London apparently in the movie is this giant like machine, this giant vehicle, an engine, and it's destroying other smaller cities and areas that are just moving as well. Everything is on wheels. And obviously the... Um, um, we got Harry... Uh, Imler, who's playing Hester. Uh, we have Hugo Weaving, who's playing Thaddeus. And then uh, Stephen Ling, who is playing Strike. Which, a lot of you know, I believe, Hugo um, from Zombieland and other such things. Uh, he also played a cameo in uh, Venom as Carnage's character. So, that's, that's interesting. Uh, the one scene where he says, swaggering down the street, giving people finger guns. Yep. Yep. Band guns, not finger guns. Agent Smith. Yep. <laughs> wait, Hugo Weaving's played Agent Smith? I think, wasn't it? Oh, wait, no, I'm thinking of Stephen Ling. Stephen Ling was the the one who played uh, the um, Tallahassee. Uh, next one. Most of you probably know about this, but it's The Mule. Um... Directed by Clint Eastwood, played by Clint Eastwood, <laughs> made by Clint Eastwood. <laughs> another another Clint Eastwood movie, um, which is about ninety year old like, um, old year old like World War II vet, and he's caught in transporting three like millions worth of cocaine through Michigan for a Mexican cartel, and he does this stuff for a living. So it's just it's a story about his his struggles and him trying to do everything he can for his family and whatnot and he ends up getting in trouble if you like clint eastwood movies you'll like this one because they're be all well told in a way um and I, I i personally like clint eastwood now than he was as dirty harry you feel lucky punk yes i know now muse <laughs> is excited for this one Mary Poppins chat. We got Mother Floppin' Mary Poppins Returns. 
that comes out <laughs> on the 19th, um, directed by Rob Marshall. Uh, he made Into the Woods um, in 2000, that came out in 2014, and Nines, which came out in 2009. Where's Eddie? I don't know. We just called him. <laughs> Nines! Nines! Where are you? Speaking from Alcatraz is, is Hugh's favorite Clint Eastwood movie. That's a good one. That is heavily a good one. I, I can agree with you there. I got you. I got you. Um, but this yeah. movie takes place decades after her original visit. Um, the magical nanny returns to help the bank's siblings and Michael's children uh, through a difficult time in their lives. Supposedly, they're already planning a sequel. That's outstanding. That is outstanding. But Mary Poppins is being played by Emily uh, Blunt. Um, and uh, Jane Banks is uh, being played by Emily uh, Mortimer. And then we got, of course, Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep's amazing. She's great. She does what she does. Um, is playing Topsy. But what is interesting is Mary Poppins came out in 1964. So this is 54 years later um, since an, an Mary Poppins movie or so has come out. Um, as well, there was the one character who is in the original who's in this one, which was Dick Van Dyke. So, Dick Van Dyke. I, he's, I, he's reappearing. And he dances in it, and it's just so cool to see him, because... I got it. The reason why I paused was I got it confused. I said Dick Van Wilder, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he was confused earlier. It's fine. All right. <laughs> I, I got... I was... Yeah. I got confused with myself. I know too many... Uh... He just really wanted to watch Van Wilder. He doesn't care about Disney movies. Yep. Yep. Oh, Ryan. Ryan Reynolds? Yeah. Dick Van Wilder? No. <laughs> Van Wilder. Never mind. Moving on. <laughs> Madam. Derailing ourselves. Never mind. Eddie Hines, get in here. Where are you? He's getting the right for Jamaica land. A uh, psh, psh, psh. And a wedding. If I wanted some no. weed, I'd go to Jamaica too. <laughs> you know, never mind. That's another story for another day. They. Do we, <laughs> do we want to bring that up? Because I we can. Cannot talk. I cannot talk. What uh, else you got for us? We got Bumblebee. Oh, I'm excited for this one too. I'm excited for this because it's not being made by Michael Bay. So, chat. But we don't have the explosions, guys. Chat, oh, you, you, you can be happy. No Transformer fans, you can praise. It's not being made by uh, Michael Butt. This movie's actually being made by um, uh, Travis Knight, which he it's interesting seeing him do this movie because the styles of movies he's always done have always been clay still frame uh, movies, Paranorman, uh, Cubo and the Two Strings, and Coraline, which came out in 2009. Um, most of you know those movies or know the style of those movies. Um, Michael B. <laughs> it's, it's made mine, Michael B. Oh. Um, so I, I find it interesting him doing one a live action and one not a still frame. He's doing a complete something out of his book, but it doesn't look half bad. Um, it takes place in 1987, where Bumblebee finds refuge, um, pretty much when he introduced and came into the land and went uh, on Earth, uh, in a Californian beach. Uh, meets upon this character, Charlie, is, um, who's 18 years old, and he tries to find his place in the world and discovers Bumblebee in battle, carnage, what do you want? You like, you like machines fighting one another? You like, you like mech on mech action? Well, it's the movie for you. You want to see John Cena? You won't see him coming. That's okay. Brandon, okay, that just reminded me of something totally unrelated, and I'll have to try to remember it for after show from a conversation I was having with someone else days uh, ago. Uh-oh. So, thank you for that. Uh-oh. But uh, Haley Steinfeld, who um, we spoke about, who is in... Was it... Um, Spider-Man into the uh, in, into the Spider-Verse. She's in this one. She plays Charlie. She plays the main protagonist within the movie with Bumblebee. Um, we got John Cena. All right. But you can't see him. But you He's can't really see dead. him. All right. You just see this bl big body with the black suit on. You you're good. And Dylan O'Brien playing as Bumblebee. Like, what? Excuse me. <laughs> Why not? John Cena. Heck yeah. Um, I also put, I wrote this all down, guys, so I also put in it, not made by Michael Bay. Yeah, he was, he's very adamant about that. Lady Edge, how are you tonight, girl? 
Good Hello. I'm going to see it with my niece and nephew. Oh, Jonna, you're going to be excited like just like that them. That should be a good one to do. Uh, so DC fans or comic book fans, praise. The 21st of December, we got Aquaman. Aquaman. I don't can, know. Uh, can, can you do that again, please? <laughs> please do that again and somebody be ready to clip it. <laughs> <laughs> but Aquaman. Okay, so I, I I'm actually excited for this because Jason Momoa is the first person to make me actually think Aquaman's a badass. Yeah, he's probably the only person that could. The only, exactly. I've always I've always looked at Aquaman and I'm like, you're a joke. There's a there's an so this goes out. There's an old video that I saw where someone voiced over it like an old comics uh, show of the Justice League and whatnot. And they're all hanging out and they're all talking and you just hear Aquaman go, but we can use the whales, guys. We can use the whales. And they're like, no, we're not using the whales. We're flying. <laughs> He's like, but the whales. It just made it terrible. It made it terrible. Yay. And after that, I see a bad impression it's of uh, of Aquaman. But it, it's, it seems like a good story. He finds himself... Um, caught in between the surface and under the sea. Um, and he tries to find his place in Atlantis and whatnot. So Jason Momoa playing Arthur Curry. Amber Heard playing Mira God. She is beautiful. Not going to lie. She's amazing. Um, and Dolph uh, Lundgren playing King Nearest. So, oh my God, he's so hot. Or it can be seen uh, <laughs> December 15th if some cities, if you have Prime. Well. Prime. Nice. Well. Yeah. Wow. His hair is amazing. Can we just shout out to Momoa's hair? Because it's like... Yeah, can we can we praise the hair? Because even I... <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm straight, but even I'm like, damn. Yeah, none of that hair is... Yeah. Looking good, bud. Keep it up. Every time... Dorito says every time he's been in a room with Momoa, he's destroyed all of the furniture. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh, God. Speaking of Prime... Guys, Speaking if you have Prime. if you have Amazon Prime connected okay. to your Twitch account, have Twitch Prime, you can subscribe to your favorite streamer for 30 days. That's right, 30 days. You can use that one free sexy email and you help them support their dreams, allow them to be beautiful. Or you can subscribe to the Twitch community. Your favorite community channel. All right, your favorite group Thank with you, a bunch Donna. of favorites, favorite streamers, favorite community, favorite people. Easy, Wait, breezy, yeah, beautiful, cover girl. <laughs> Tell you more? Well, well, I don't want to get into it, but you also get free loot. For certain games that you like to play, like Warframe, oh, PUBG, Overwatch, truth. or anything else, you can get free loot. Cosmetics. Right now, you can get your last chance for a League of Legend legendary skin shard. You like playing Roll LOL? Tanks well, package, bravo. Well, your way into the package. <laughs> There's some in game loot right now through the end of the year for Rainbow Six Siege. Warframe has some stuff going on. Mm. Warframe, Warframe always has... The one good thing about it, if you're a Warframe player, there always is something good with Twitch Prime. So if you have an Amazon Prime account connected, you get so many benefits and everything. How do you do that? Use your Prime sub. Uh, when you click the subscribe button, they'll be either pay with $5 or right above, use your Twitch Prime to uh, subscribe to the uh, streamer. You or have to make sure that your Amazon Prime is connected to your Twitch, though, in order for it to work. That is true. That is true. You have to do Hugh that. Hugh wants all the Fortnite. Everybody send Hugh all the Fortnite things ever. Where's my Fortnite? And now Hugh will never talk to me again. I feel <laughs> sad. So, subscribe today. All right. Next next movie uh, coming up. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, you know. Though. Next movie coming up. <laughs> we got it right here, folks. All right. We're beautiful. What's up, Tatia? Hi. How are you? Uh, we got Holmes and Watson, which... Holmes and the homies. This should be hilarious. Which is amazing because the two actors in it, I freaking love. I love so much. Um, the movie comes out on the 25th. It's directed by Ethan Cohen, who made uh, Men in Black 3, uh, Tropic Thunder, and Madagascar 2. Um, but it's a humorous take on uh, 
the Arthur Cohen's, uh, Conan's uh, Doyle's uh, classic Mysterious featuring Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. The actor who's playing Holmes is Will Ferrell, and we got John C. Riley uh, playing as Watson. I love this. It should be hilarious. Because those two together are insanely hilarious. Um, the last movie they made was Step Brothers together. That was the last movie I believe they were in and that they made together. So seeing them to do this, you know, it's it's going to be great. If you haven't seen the trailer or anything, you should. If you're not doing anything on Christmas, if the movie theater's open, go see Holmes and Watson. Yeah, I, I, you will you will you won't miss it. I guarantee it. You won't you won't be disappointed. I connected. Woo! But um this one this one's actually good because of um, many reasons, but uh, this is the last one of the movies that I have selected for it, um, which is If Bell Street Could Talk, uh, which is directed by Barry Jenkins. Um, the story is about a woman in Harlem uh, desperately scrambles to prove her fiancé's innocence of a crime while carrying her first child. Um, it, it's, a, it's a good movie showing them hardship, strength, and... Um, just then have a determination to fight through a certain issue in a certain time and a certain cause. Um, back then Harlem was good. And then they went through an innocence. They're coming back on the Renaissance, but even now there are certain struggles that a lot of people face and Harlem is an area that does face. So it's a good movie that tells a really wholesome, wholesome story. Um, the main, main protagonist is Kiki Lane. Um, she's playing Tish. And then we have uh, Stephen James, who's playing Al Alonzo, who is the one, um, I believe, being uh, prosecuted and went out for the crime. But um, Jerry Barry Jenkins, the director of it, has also made certain movies that you might have seen um, or have heard. Moonlight, which came out last year. And then we have uh, Medicine for Melancholy, which came out in 2008. Uh, he's he's an outstanding director. Um, he does a lot of good stuff on telling wholesome movies on passion between certain couples and people or um, just situations within uh, the, the world. So if you want to go see that, it comes out on the 25th as well. It's a very good movie. But that's about it for the movies that I have. I, I hope you all heard. If you didn't, look on IMDb. You'll find them. It'll, they'll give a better topic Worst than me. Host? Worst host 2018. All right, that's a... That's here's, here's what we're going to talk about. Now go here and actually look it up. Yep. But if you miss anything <laughs> and you have interest in a movie and whatnot, if you didn't hear it, we can post it and we can tell you. But those are the movies. I hope certain ones that you guys are interested in. I'm interested in yeah. seeing uh, a lot of them. Um, Aquaman, I'm, I feel like I have to see... Uh, I feel like if I don't, I'm doing, I'm not doing justice to, you know, the movie community and everything. Um, That's fair. I need That's to, fair. I need to see that. I, I want to see uh, uh, Mortal Engines though. That's the one I want to see the most. Mortal Engines. Uh, I, there's so many of them that I want to see. Mortal Engines, um, Bumblebee. I want to see Mary Poppins and um, Sherlock Holmes. Like those are my top oh, four yeah. I want to be checking out. I think they're amazing. I don't know. I know Jono said that he'll be checking out Bumblebee. What about you guys? Who else? What what? What movies are see? you guys excited for? What movie do you want to see? It could be one of these. Because there's this is not a complete list of movies that are coming out by any means. There's more. No. There are 28 coming movies out. coming out in theater this month. We only spoke about 13. So, yeah. There's a ton out there. Um... What's a movie? I don't know, Mars. What is a movie? Where do we Google it? I mean, it? I, we, we occasionally watch them sometimes. And I know you, you can't say what's a movie because you've watched them. Pikachu isn't coming out this month, though. No. But it is one that people are looking forward to. This it story. is. We, so we were Toy just... Story 4. Oh, God. I heard so many things about that. Oh. I don't know if I can see Toy Story 4 just because of what I heard about I didn't, it. I didn't see Toy Story 3, so I feel like I'm behind. That's it. After two, I don't care it. anymore. That's it. That's it. You and hey, me. Sonic. They did. They just released a Sonic poster. Sonic that, is Sonic that is true. That is true. I'm mortified. For Sonic? Yeah. It shouldn't be that bad. It'll the poster and everything. You're doing a CGI animated movie on that. 
It's a, it's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit risky. The legs, the legs, that's what bothers me. It's his legs are thick. <laughs> Sonic's legs shouldn't be thick like that. Gotta They're sticks. They're sticks. They don't have muscle to them. They're sticks. Gotta go fast somehow. We gotta have some muscle. What the backside of the poster would look like. The booty. <laughs> that booty. Oh, God. Oh, I gotta see that. Glutimus Maximus. <laughs> Please do. Like, if you have that, can you post that and fix it? Post it. Post it. We need to see it. We need to see it. Oh, the booty. We got a plump Sonic booty. <laughs> the things that we never think about as kids. Like, why? why is <laughs> Can't so spell legendary without a leg day. True, leg you. Day. True. <laughs> this is why I'll never be legendary. I'll throw that out there. Pisha. Pisha. <laughs> oh, goodness. But, so, yeah, there's a lot. I have... um someone I know who his normally for holidays for Christmas they get together at grandma's but uh since Sherlock Holmes is coming up the 25th he's already been like sorry I'm not gonna be there so like start a new tradition of checking out new movies at Christmas <laughs> Heck Eddie yeah, Eyes dude. is in the house yo what is up Eddie in. we'll say hello 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 um, you missed the movie talk, sir. All the things you missed movie talk. What are you doing? Eddie, what Priorities. movie do you want to see this month? That's, that's our question. That's my specific question to you. What movie do you want to see that's coming out this month? Let me guess. Aquaman. How does Aquaman sound again? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist it. <laughs> Two trailers should be dropping before long. True. I would expect it to. Oh yeah, isn't that like far, far away or so the movie's called? Yo, what's up, Eddie? What's Gucci? What's your favorite movie? The what's the movie that you were excited for that's coming out this month? That's the question to you guys. I want answers now in the chat. What is the question of the Why month that you're... I that some of you already answered. I know we have Spider-Man. We have Mute, Mars going on. What's a movie? Just giving you... <laughs> Oh, goodness. So those are movies. Um, we do have some gaming news that we'd like to move into to chat with. Um, you don't eyeballs. like movie theaters? No, I'm blinding myself. Movie theaters don't like you, Hugh. Oof. I like my movie theater because it's quiet and not many people go. <laughs> Same. <laughs> my movie theater's in a heavily populated area, but whenever I go, there's no one there. And the place is actually decent. <laughs> It's not even trash. It's decent looking. But there's no one there. I'm like... Kitty Chaos! Guys, can we get some hype in the oh! channel for Kitty Chaos rating with a party of 24? Watch your Kitty ears. Kitty Chaos, you are beautiful and amazing. Kitty Chaos, coming in with that party of 24. Welcome to the Twitch crew community. Crew talk. Pleasure to have you. What is going on, everyone? Raiders, how's that? Welcome, welcome to... Ooh, Nip Slips incoming? Oh, my God. Talk. Oh, my God. Nip Slips? Uh, how much are we paying? Don't look at me. I'm not looking at you. Uh, I'm looking at the chat. <laughs> if, I'm looking, if I'm looking at you, I'm looking this way. That's fair, Hugh. Welcome, Raiders. Fair. Welcome, everyone, to the Twitch crew community crew talk. How are you Kitty, all doing this evening? What were you playing? What were you streaming? And how are you? How is it in the future? For those that don't know... Uh, Kitty lives in the future. She's in New Zealand. <laughs> oh, that's the future as I've ever gotten. Yeah, yeah. It's already tomorrow there. Colossus, what is up? Bad fight, what's <laughs> going on? Russ BC. How I are you? I love that emote. That is Jamie NZ, what's going on? Welcome, Raiders. Welcome. Hey, hey, we talking catnip. Mm, get your mind out of the gutter. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We just finished with some movie talk. We're moving into some gaming news. We're going to start with some Siege stuff that's updated. I'm going to let him talk about it because he's the Siege guy, so. What's Siege? You know that game you've spent hours. <laughs> oh, hours, oh, yeah, hours, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hours, yeah. And hours in, and since it was an alpha, and you actually normally wear the hoodie. Got to get the Twitch love. Was playing Overwatch doing the events grinding skins. Whoa, Tachi nice. has Siege. Yes. Okay, chat. 
down talk right now. All right, real talk, real okay. talk, serious talk. Rainbow Six Siege. It's a great game. Outstanding game. Not much. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege last Tuesday recently dropped an update and new DLC called Wind Bastion. Um, for those of you who do not know, Wind Bastion, every, um, they do four seasons a year, obviously. Um, this is the final season to year three of Rainbow Six Siege. Um, and Wind Bastion is the final installment on it. It gave us two operators and a map. Uh, the map is called Fortress, which takes place in Morocco. It is this Moroccan oh, fortress. Beautiful view, beautiful sights, beautiful things. Um, it actually has a great flow to it. Uh, for those of you who do play Siege like religiously like I do, um, you don't feel overpowered by um, Pierce Advantage. Uh, there's no it's sided to this side or that. As there's a good balance to it where it's either or... Um, it's not that it's always attacker heavy or defender heavy. The attackers can come and enter the building very easily without having any issues or encountering much of it. Um, and defenders can actually have so much uh, room to move. Uh, so I honestly personally um, love it because while there are hallways, as Tatia says, it is not close quarter heavy. There are a lot of rooms that are very open, allow you to have your distance and allow you to not feel isolated in it. So it's a good, it's a good map. Um, secondly, the operators, we got two. First one is the attacker Nomad. She is um, three speed, one armor operator. She handles two weapons. She handles um, an AK-47, which is 41 rounds to the clip. It does about 43 damage on it with a fire rate of 760. Um, I believe I could be wrong on that. Uh, her second one is also a fully automated rifle, 21 rounds. I forget the name of it. It is an ACR model though. Um, but it is 21 rounds slower, but more powerful about 41, 47 damage per hit on it. Um, both can have, um, ACOGs, any site they want, uh, the pistol, which are actually for both attack and defense is insane. It is a 44 caliber pistol with about eight rounds to the clip. But it, what makes it interesting is that it has a sniper scope to it. And the sniper scope is so clear and so beautiful. You hit those shots like it's bread and butter. All right. It is. That's for me. Um, if you're Muse, you still hit it. Okay. Um, there's no recoil to it, so it's actually good. But what makes her special is that her gun, her main primary gun, has a um, attachment on it, which she can shoot at these things called air jabs, similar to like an Ela Grismont mine. It sticks. Um, you shoot it from the gun, from the gun. It propels off the rifle, sticks onto the surface, and is activated within a certain um, proximity, a radius. You can see if anyone, any enemy stands in that, they are launched, launched back. They are disoriented. They are stunned. They get knocked on the ground, but they are not incapacitated. They are able to get back up. Um, so it's she's very she's actually the first trapper in Rainbow Six Siege on the attacker's side. So it's very nice to counter against Clash because it makes her remove her shield to pull out her pistol, so she's vulnerable. And for Kavera, if Kavera is trying to sneak up, getting that booty, uh, you'll be safe. Hopefully, unless she shoots him. So no, that's actually pretty cool. Um, the defending operator who I God love and hate at the same time is Kaid. Um, most people call him Kaid, but it's Kaid. Um, he is a defender two, two, uh, no, actually, uh, three, three armor, one speed operator. He has an AUG A3, which has a 30 round clip. I believe you can only go into holographic or short range, uh, sites, but the, he has the same pistol as Nomad. What makes him interesting is his shotgun. His shotgun's not normal. It's not a normal 12-gauge bird seed slug like round, uh, bird round. It is a, like a slug. Um, it's narrow sights. It can snipe across a map. Um, for those of you who know, the Kevian Vigil, their shotgun two rounds hits it across the map. His does the same, except, except it's 11 rounds, and you can attach a shotgun to it. So... If you thought Vigil and Dokebi shotgun was literal, literal cancer on that, welcome to Kaid with his 11-round sniper shotgun. 
Um, his ability allows him, he has two things called electro claws, similar to bandits. He could throw them on walls, he could throw them on ceilings, he could throw them on the ground, and within a radius, if things are metal or barbed wire or th certain things just metal in general, they will be electrified. So he can actually electrify two wall reinforced walls with one uh, electro claw. So that's actually them. So that's pretty much it for Siege. New operators that are actually decent and not overpowered, but add a nice flow and change to the game. And a map that it has great rotation and beauty towards it. I don't play Siege that much, I swear. I don't have a thousand all. hours into it. I didn't go pro once with it. I didn't, no, not at all. I love Siege. For those of you who <laughs> love Siege, that's the Siege news, and that's the most recent thing. Last Tuesday, you obviously know, they were on the test server for two weeks beforehand, so pretty much everyone knows. But we figured we'd touch base and give that a little quick uh, snap those on that. Those who don't know who aren't, who aren't um, every day into it or know what's going on with Siege. Uh, same with Destiny 2. Just recently, they released the, the latest DLC, um, Black Armory. Yes, Black Armory. Um, I'm still trying to catch up with all the past DLC, so the new stuff is not even on my Same. radar yet. Same. I'm behind. But it, it shows or proves to be an interesting addition. Um, they've added an area to the tower because of it that you can only unlock after completing um, the Forsaken stuff as well. Uh, Nespar, thanks for hanging out. Um, so that should be really good. I, I honestly cannot tell you all the really cool stuff that's coming with it other than I know there's more more DLC, um, more story stuff going on. And right now, too, uh, as of yesterday, they just started Christmas, the dawning. Thank you, Maggie. That's where I was headed. You were in my mind. Um, it's really cool. If you're in the tower, it's snowing. You can throw snowballs at people. I have no um, idea how much time I spent today on baking cookies. You, you, you bake cookies. You get a little easy bake lantern and you put ingredients in it and you make cookies which i wish i had now and, i see uh, that and i want it as an item like real life to put really it right freaking here awesome it's pretty freaking awesome um hey new york gamer what's going on new york <laughs> with the dawning comes a lot of different things different quests um that you can go on and you can get different things they now have um the speedster the sparrow you can get the sleigh the christmas sleigh which is really cool looking they also have I don't have it yet. I'm sad. I'm one away. Um, I have way more than that. Well, I don't want to talk about it. Um, you can also, they have multiplayer emotes. So if two people have, say, the fist bump emote, you can do the fist bump with each other. You can do each other There's high There's high five and chest bump. And chest bump, which is a really cool concept in my mind to integrate that into the multiplayer to have uh, the emotes that way. Multiplayer. I'm a high five chat in the face. High five! I just I have my favorite my favorite emote is just the awkward wave where I just my character just stands there and waves because that's so me. <laughs> anyway, the New York gamer, we're talking uh, Destiny two at the moment. So there's some other things too. What there's, is going you know, on? Hold steel. Different gear. Steel, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Let's see. Rambo also brought up to my attention today, which I was not aware of. Um, Borderlands 2. Mm. VR. Mm, yes. Uh, not much on that that I know of, but pretty much Borderlands 2, the game that we've loved, came out, what, like 2012, 2010, um, is now coming to PlayStation VR. That's right. Borderlands 2 is now virtual reality. You can play it. If you have a PlayStation and a PlayStation virtual reality headset, you can purchase that and play it. I, I don't know how well it works. I don't have a play, uh, PlayStation VR headset. I only have an Oculus, so I wouldn't know. But, you know, if you like Borderlands, you might like it playing first place, first person like that. So that I thought that was very interesting, very quick. It comes out uh, December 14th um for uh P psvr so if you guys have any that have that cool. stay tuned that should be cool um leave it to these cubes to host yo john we're the greatest host ever all right yeah. we're the greatest host ever you just jealous boy mm -hmm. you just jealous because we got you more sass than anyone here new york we will get to that in just a moment because we're going to talk about subnautica first um 
Subnautica, uh, for those who don't know, is a super awesome, kind of spooky game. My, my, my most favorite exploration type game ever. It's, it's an awesome home. Overwatch game. for the win, yo. Look at those so charity biddies. For the old biddies. 15, Overwatch for the win. That's what? awesome. So people who don't know, we're going to take a quick pause. For people who don't know what just happened, in starting today through the 27th of the month, Twitch is um, raising money for direct relief. And for every bitty, for every hundred biddies, 20 cents is donated um, to direct relief. It doesn't come out of the streamers portion uh, of what they get. It's, it's all coming from Twitch. So encourage people in your chats, for those who stream, to include hashtag charity or use the charity bits, um, which Overwatch for the Win did both. So you get to see both. Yes. Um, that way it counts towards. And right now, as you saw in chat there, $25,000 has already been raised. That's that's insane. Um, so there is, there's every year that we they've always they've always top their previous number. Every year, Twitch yeah. has done that with the charity thing. So that's a super cool thing that you can do as a viewer or as a streamer. You can encourage your viewers to do and or both. Mm hmm. Yep. But oh, it automatically puts the chair hashtag charity in there. Awesome. I didn't realize it did automatically. Very, very cool. Thank you, Baggy, for that added part. Um, so, yes, yeah, Subnautica. It's a super cool undersea um, adventure game on a alien planet. Yep. Uh, Subnautica is a underwater game. It takes place on a distinct planet. You're a survivor within it, those of you who do not know. You, you're on your ship and your ship ends up crashing on the planet and you're the only survivor there and you have to explore, survive, you have to build craft and do stuff. But I did a playthrough on my channel and it's honestly, it's one of the greatest exploration games I've ever played in the longest time. It's so in depth. I love it because the developers want to keep in touch with their community and tell the updates and allow you to go along with their journey of building the game. Uh, the game is on full release now um and everything so one interesting thing about it is it now is on playstation and xbox so those con people who have console and have always wanted to try um subnautica you can Jono. now get it on console Jono, he's already told me <laughs> So that was another thing. And another thing on with speaking of Subnautica is that Epic Games is doing a thing right now where you can get the game for free. And I believe starting it's the starting the 14th. I believe it's a you you claim it, you keep it, right? Or is yes, it a limited yeah. so time? Basically, Epic Games, what they're doing beyond just having Fortnite um, on their thing, they actually have Epic Games Store that they have officially launched and they're giving away free games every two weeks that's um, amazing subnautica is the first one from the 14th through the 27th um and then the 28th through the 10th of january is going to be super meat boy Ooh, that's a classic so, a classic yeah for sure uh the cool thing with the epic game store is that they are going to include a lot of different indie titles including an exclusive one to the epic store which is hades hmm. hades is amazing um for those of you who know hades is, be is um the latest installment by the company supergiant games they've made bastion transistor and undeer i believe is the uh the one before hades uh it, it's it's really cool because hades you play as this character um who is hades son and i <laughs> having a blank on gods and names um but either way fail i know uh, the game is pretty much like you defy the god of death, Hades, as you... It's a hack and slash. Um, looks like it's almost a roguelike in a way because you can progress and progress in the story, but every time you die, it's a new new path that you can take and go through. Um, it's a roguelike dungeon crawler from it and everything. Um, it is in early access, so they did, they did state as well, once it's out of early access... Um, it will be coming on Steam, so if you don't like the Epic Games launcher and want to wait for it to become full a full uh, full release, it will be coming on Steam as well, so you don't have mm -hmm. to um, worry about that. Um, and it's been getting great reviews. Um, 
articles and everything, everyone's saying they're going even in early access. This game is high intense action, outstanding crew in the cast of voices, and the story is really, really well told. They say there are some bugs with it, with the character and how he moves and fights, but overall, for something that's early access, it's so well done. It's so well done. Yeah, and um, it should be it should be really good. So it's a clue, really cool that they're working with Epic. Um, as Baggy pointed out, it really helps the devs um, with the launcher because they have um, the they're coaches. actually giving them more. Um, the the devs will receive more revenue for their games through the Epic Launcher store um, than say Steam. So, um, mm -hmm. Steam Steam's Cute. probably going to have maybe. <laughs> A little bit of competition there's been a few others a lot of companies are very branching out on having other things epic being the first on that and having yep. different companies it's, uh, and different games within it besides their own it's it's going to be good and you know they're not going to just have yes. new games new indie games they're going to have some other stuff um current titles they have they have the hades ashen uh hello neighbor hide and seek which is is a really cool um take on the um it's a multiplayer version of hello neighbor Ooh. Um, I know Vlastelin has played it. Uh, a few other people. It looks really cool. You are a kid getting into your neighbor's house, and um, one of the people plays as the neighbor, and you can throw the same glue jars and stuff at, at, at him and stuff. That's and of awesome. course, they're going to have Fortnite on there. Of course, they're going to have Fortnite. Um, yep. Upcoming titles are going to be Subnautica, Super Meat Boy, as I said, Darksiders 3, mm -hmm. Satisfactory, Rebel Galaxy, Outlaw, Outer Wilds, Journey, Man Eater, World War Z. Genesis Alpha 1, Shadow Complex that's Remastered. That's crazy that they're bringing Dark Souls 3 into it. Mm-hmm. Yep, so... That's great. Um, so it, it's going to be a much better as far as on the back end, and they are going to be offering some more stuff. And I think it's really cool because they're going to they're continuing. As long as you are utilizing the store, you get those free games. Um, and they're not... I mean, Subnautica is... it's. Twenty dollar game, I think, right now. Um, that they're they're just gonna get for free. So if you haven't played it, you should definitely pick it up. Mm -hmm. And um, Subnautica is a great out. great game to stream. Yep, it's New a York great game. Saying he believes it's an eighty five percent cut instead of around a seventy percent. I th I remember saying eighty like eighty five eighty eight. It's it's more. What's up, I mac and cheese? Much. I don't want to settle on the exact number because I don't know for sure, but it is supposed to be more. So. How are you doing, um, mac and cheese? Welcome and cheese. to the crew talk. Welcome. I saw King Brady popping in as well. Hello, hello. It might, um, it might, it might make Steam uh, change. It might, it might, yeah. One can hope, actually. Oh, no, the oh, the Discord story is going to hurt Steam immensely. Because if they get it out and do it right, it's going to be ten times better than Steam. On just how it is. I just so, found a pickle flavored candy cane. Ooh. Pickle flavored. Ooh. Better late than never is so true, Kitty. He's here. Max here. That's all we care. Mm -hmm. So welcome, welcome. Um, I was gonna talk about Fortnite. No, Outer Worlds. Hmm. And we can talk about Fortnite as well. Outer Worlds um, is was announced at the at the Video Game Awards. Brain stopped halfway through that sentence. Um, it's from Obsidian. And they're basically oh, it's the, the creators of Fallout. Somebody, uh, Fallout New Vegas. Uh, yep, exactly. Everyone's saying um, that it's, a, it's like a space version of Fallout New Vegas and such. Basically, like a blend of Fallout, Bioshock, and maybe a little bit of Borderlands. Mm -hmm. um, I heard about the trailer that. Looks, the trailer looks super cool. Um, basically, in the game, you awake from hibernation on a colonist ship that was lost in transit. Um to the furthest colony from Earth located at the edge of the galaxy, only to find yourself in the midst of a deep conspiracy threatening to destroy it. Oh my. Um, as you explore oh the furthest reaches of space and encounter various factions, all vying for power, of course, the character you decide to become will determine how the player-driven story unfolds. Hmm. So that should be really cool. I just, want to, um, I just want to point out one thing. Welcome everyone who's currently joining us. For those of you who do not know, I am Rambo, uh, joined by me with Musa Shell. We are the host for tonight of Crew Talk for the Twitch Crew community. If you're new or anything and don't know anything about the Twitch Crew, uh, we are a community full of amazing people, streamers, game devs, and more who are trying to always doing our best to help uh, streamers get their... Uh, what's up? 
support one another. Just yeah. general support. Just support one another, support one another. For stream, for Twitch, whatever it is, we we do our best in uh so if you are new and don't know member, anything, join. Absolutely. I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's really cool. And since we're talking Epic and Fortnite, Fortnite Season 7 just released as well. Whoa! Some really cool things. Um, one of, well, let's talk Let's talk what they've added for this season. Oh. They always add something. <laughs> Two things that everyone's raging about. A sword and a plane. My God. Mother fluffing swords off my mother fluffing plane. Um, I don't know. That bad joke. Just forget it. Um, it should it should be fun. I haven't played it with the new season. I love that you got really quiet and you are ignoring me now. What? Exactly. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> also, what? <laughs> something that's really cool that they did um, mm. is creative mode. That what is, Baggy is just stated? Yep. Thing. Yep, Baggy's. You, Get out of my head, sir. Get out. There's not <laughs> enough room for me. I can't. <laughs> but creative mode is going to be really cool. They give you an island. You get to design it yourself. They give you an entire palette. You get a whole prefab made buildings. You get chests. You get weapons. You get whatever you want to build your island. You do have um, a certain amount of memory that you can only fill within your world. So it's not like full so pretty much if you, you if you, you if you guys thought that fortnite couldn't get any more minecraft guess again they're full it, it blown minecraft um but in a cooler way because with their island i believe you can invite up to 16 of your friends to come and play that's and awesome. check out your island that's that's cool that is cool and you get four islands that you can save so you can do four different designs that you can play and the really cool part that they're also implementing because you can share it as well with the community um risky reels is now gone for the creative block um, yep. and that's where they will be implementing showcasing some of these different things that people from the community are building yep certain certain places as well with the map in general has been changed the whole west side has been changed it's now snow so greasy grove is changed it's gone um and uh, Flush Factory is gone. They have it's just a whole ski loft area now. Uh, new a couple couple weapons I believe have been added. But the two things that have been added to the game that everyone's raging about is the sword, the Infinity Sword that they're calling it, and the plane. The sword is overpowered. The pers the person uh, can launch himself in the air and break build break buildings down just by launching or slicing. It destroys through any platform and whatnot. And when they kill you, they get 100% health. But they ended up fixing that, so now it's 50% on it. Um, and the plane, similar thing. It can be destroyed, though, but the plane can be rushed, can rush down to destroy buildings. So a lot of people are raging on it because it's like, really? You ruined the whole game by doing adding the plane and whatnot that can swoop down. You're in a battle, say a 1v1 with someone, and it's a great build battle and everything. All of a sudden, a plane comes out of nowhere, left field, and you're done. <laughs> You're done. I think it's hilarious. It's awesome. I love that's what I love about Fortnite is regardless if you like the game or not. <clears throat> excuse me. They're always adding, they're always bringing something new in and keeping it fresh. And I mean, what better way than to add a freaking biplane that, you know, you can stand on the wing of and <laughs> destroy your enemies, you know, like Yeah, I've I've seen a lot of good and bad <laughs> things come from that plane. Damn you plane. I'm never getting destroyed by it. I'm dying don't die but um, um yeah so that that should be really cool um you know and as always there's always new emotes and stuff that they pr provide with the new season baggy saying the creative mode also has featured maps too there's a halo forge mode no it's, it's like it's like halo forge mode which actually used to be a mode in mm -hmm. halo where the player could create his own thing very cool and john i saw a video somebody created a wwe arena so that's cool that's dope that is dope. Um, I that people There's a lot of things in, in awesome. creative things. There are a lot of creative people in the world, so it's awesome that it's already being shown and whatnot. But Heck yeah. I believe Who's running from town, Kitty? Who's running from the law? Who did it? It wasn't me. Did I miss something? I feel like I missed something. I don't know. <laughs> but um, I believe that's it when I added for Fortnite, right? I think so. So... Lead on to the next battle royale that is a uh, PUBG. Out. 
Yep. I don't know if anybody is anybody still playing PUBG. If you're still playing PUBG and you love it, well, this is for you. Uh, PUBG has recently come out with a new map, a winter type it's map. It's still on the it's on the test server still. I don't think it's come out on the full game yet. Okay, but either way, they have a new map that is being mm -hmm. released. Um, it's, it's a winter type the map. Candy. See, she knows more about me because I chose not I to notes. do research. That's why I'm blinded on this side here. Um, it's currently on the test server. It does give you 6v6 combat. The vehicle added for it are snow machines. Go figure, because it is a winter map. Um, the one cool thing that it does offer, because it is snow, they actually have, you can track people because of footprints in the snow. Hmm. So that's kind of cool. Um, they are also adding a G36C assault rifle to the game for this map. So, so Ash's other gun. Got it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other cool thing with PUBG right now is that they finally released it to PS4 players. I don't know if you're still excited, but rejoice. PUBG is now no, on the PlayStation. On no, no, you don't have to play on mobile anymore. You can PlayStation <laughs> play has on officially PUBG. come on to uh, play uh, with PUBG. So it's now there. It's it's uh, I believe it's actually when is it? Yeah, it came out. It came out actually on the seventh. So it recently came out. So if you like PUBG, if you're interested in it, you know, go do it. Go do it. If you got it, if you got the cash, why not? Why not pay it with PUBG? Cause, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, you thought Eddie was running from the law? No, he has a wedding in Jamaica. That's where he's headed. But I mean, maybe that's just his cover story. There you go, Jono. There's that hype. There's that hype. Also. Still bad? What? Go ahead. No. I was going to talk about VGAs and the announcements. I was going to talk about uh, uh, Smash. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I, where I was headed. Okay. VGAs was last week. They did some announcements, some of which was this stuff that we've been talking about. One of which they announced a, an important character going to be added for the DLC for Smash. And that character is... Joker! Joker <laughs> from Persona 5. Uh, what's really cool about this is that it's not a Nintendo owned character no. that they're adding in, which no. is really, really cool. Plus it's just Joker from Persona 5, which is really cool just by itself. It's it's an amazing thing, Smash players. <laughs> like a Christmas tree? Yo, uh, when I, <laughs> on my stream the night when Smash was being released and everything, I screamed. Con my brother screamed. We were so excited. Joker is coming. For those who don't know, Joker is from Persona 5. It's a PlayStation game where it's an RP. You live in a life of a high schooler trying to face off evil and just live a life. It is an extremely great social like exploration type game. Great conversations. Great uh, gameplay. Overall, just like a 10 out of 10 game. And the fact that they are doing... Nintendo's doing this and have Joker, who's from PlayStation, not even Nintendo, coming to... A Wii, a, I don't know, a Wii. A Nintendo, a Nintendo game. game is huge because that, that shows Super that huge. there's nothing that they can't do. That means there is whatever we can do. We can have Goku come in, Master Chief come in. Like, you could, I don't that know. That would be sweet. Master Chief in Smash? You can have Marcus Phoenix from Gears of War come in. Heck, oh, he destroyed. That'd be awesome. <laughs> But, but it, it does open the possibility. It, it does open awesome so so many opportunities and possibilities. The fact that they are being uh, like less strict on it and allowing that to happen, it's just it's outstanding. It is outstanding. And this is just the first the first DLC coming coming right. with if you pre purchase the game and you can purchase them after the Piranha Plant. The Piranha Plant. Is yes, amazing. the Piranha Plant is cute. Give me Kate Six, eh? But you, we could. Yes. You could. You could. There are so many. There's so many things that could happen with it. So, Smash. Smash came out on the seventh Friday. Um, He's out. waiting for a switch right now. He really wants to play. He's done with us, guys. He's done. See you guys later. <laughs> Uh, it is an outstanding game. I've already put in 28 hours of the game already. Um, the entire community's been playing. The entire community has been playing. I've been playing with some amazing people. Hugh, Phoenix, Palavin, Mars, Eddie, um, Harry. Uh, we've been playing with some amazing people within the Twitch crew on that. It is a hilarious game. It is, it's, it's action fun. We have a lot of friendly banter, a lot of smack talk and whatnot, but it is 
it is probably one of the greatest Smash games that have released. Everyone says, as as punny as you can be, it is the ultimate game. There you go. So, Smash, um, Smash 7. Another kind of announcement that came out of the VGAs, the official announcement hasn't occurred yet, but Mortal Kombat 11? Question mark? Yeah, the trailer was shown and 11. everything. The trailer and everything Mortal was, was shown. The, um, the proper reveal will be the 17th of January. J January? Wow. January, and... The game launches in April, yep. towards the end of April. Yep, they did show as well as they did with Mortal Kombat X, which was like a cinematic fight trailer, which for Mortal Kombat X, it was Scorpion and Sub-Zero and a classic rap rap uh, music going in the background, but a classic fight between them. Gory, outstanding. If you like Mortal Kombat, you like the gore, well, you know, this is a game for you. I'm, I'm curious on it. I loved Mortal Kombat X, but... The game's physics, its animations, and certain things really drew me away from it. So I hope that they come with this with the gore and with it, but actual good animation. Because that was the issue in their fall from last one, was the animation and everything else. But Mortal Kombat 11, another fighting game that is coming out um, soon, April. Really close. Yep. Should be, that's not that far out. It's really cool. Um, which leads us to talk about the VJs, VGAs, the Video Game Awards The themselves. VJs. <clears throat> the v vegas the vegans um hey okay, why not <laughs> um so we'll kind of go through some of the categories who was nominated who won um feel free to add your opinions on whether or not you agree what you feel this that the I other want whatever your opinion. you want i want your opinion on it game of the year let's start right at the beginning game of the year you had god of war assassin's creed odyssey celeste marvel spider-man and red dead redemption so many people, there was, there was two camps that I saw, God of War and Red Dead. Uh, God of War is the one that won. That's why he's super excited. He was worried that Red Dead would win. Um, it's the greatest game of all time! <laughs> I mean, maybe. Um, <laughs> it was a really cool game. I think it was well-deserved. Um, I love that Celeste was in there. I just got to point that out because mm -hmm. Celeste was an indie game. Celeste won two, actually, two awards. They did, they did, and we'll talk about that when we get to those. Um, but I, I think that's really cool that that was game included in Game of the Year. Mm -hmm. um, were there any surprises for you? Like you, you wanted God of War. Oh, I wanted God of War, hundred percent. Yeah. So I didn't I, have a, I didn't have a I wasn't surprised. One. I wasn't surprised on it. And even playing through Red Dead, everyone's like, "Oh, Red Dead's gonna make it." Nah, 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 dude. Nothing beats the how great God of War was because not only was it a great game, even everyone knew it. Like that was the game that Santa Monica brought, that was really mature, well told, and told more than what it what it actually was supposed to. Well, the thing that I noticed too of all the games, like you always get the people who take their favorite lines or favorite things that happen out of the game, and you didn't hear thing lines from Spider Man. You didn't hear lines from arthur out of red dead um boy exactly. exactly everybody was doing the boy thing forever boy of war <laughs> dad of war yeah. <laughs> father of um, boy <laughs> so there's the just boy a lot thing of things with it everywhere so i feel like it was it was deserved it was a heavily one. impactful game for a lot of people mm -hmm. yep a lot of people really got into that one mm -hmm. um the best ongoing game, um, Rainbow Six Siege, was listed. Overwatch, No Man's Sky, interestingly, Destiny 2, and Fortnite, with Fortnite winning best on gaming war. Go figure. On, on Go game. figure. Ongoing game. I cannot English. English is hard. I mean, um, yeah. I get. Speaking on, you were you sounded surprised on Des, uh, No Man's Sky. Um, I can get. No Man's Sky being there, because even though it started off really bad, they ended up improving it, and where it is at its current state is what it should have been on release. So it is a ongoing, oh, sure. best ongoing game for that. So I, I, just, I think my surprise on it was just the fact that it was there because of the fact that it did start so late. Way, la way low mm -hmm. from where it should have been. Oh, yeah. And the fact that it was included in ongoing, even as just a nominee, was, was surprising for me because... I think a lot of people gave up on the game. Oh, a lot of people were. It, it was it was 
straight into like the disappointment of the year game, the like the most overhyped yeah. game. And after that, people's trust on you know game developers or indie games and Kickstarters is like um, gone down, but not by mm-hmm. much. But having them come back and rebuild it and build it to what it is has gained that trust again. Yes, yeah. I think so, too. Um, but I think, you know, I love Rainbow Six, one of my favorites. Destiny 2 is one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. Um, so you I know R6 is your favorite. And I can understand why they're there, because there is still so much going on with them. There's a huge fan base for both of them. Both, you know, the lore of Destiny 2, the community is huge. Destiny um, 2 picked up as well for when Forsaken release. I, I from Hearing from mm-hmm. everyone, like, people were like... <clears throat> Destiny 2, the two, the DLCs lost me, but once Forsaken came out, I came back and I love the game again. Like Forsaken oh, for sure. really saved Destiny though. <laughs> well, Forsaken brought in a whole new storyline that, you know, the community kind of they were they were asking for something to happen. Yeah. And they, you know, they stepped up and they made something happen. I don't this there are a few people who don't know, so I don't want to spoil. It's not like it's super new news, but Excuse it's me, I haven't gotten there yet. I just finished Warmind. <laughs> you, uh, it's it's super impactful I'll say that much and uh, you know they did listen and I think that really brought kind of the community more involved into it from what I've heard from friends who are super involved in it and from having played through the DLCs now um, but I do love their the fact that they are adding different things and they have they have the great storyline you can do so much with the storyline yeah. they have several couple different ways to do PvP uh, yep <laughs> so there's a lot that the game offers so for it to be there as ongoing is perfect same thing with siege like it doesn't have story mode mm-hmm. but the fact it has the three different types with hostage the nomad plays um bomb and mm-hmm. secure area you know it, it provides a lot so the fact that they are adding constantly adding new operators um fan box changes what do you mean by that baggy in destiny I'm confused. Um, but Fortnite, hands down. Ooh, ooh, sorry. Um, Gamer, we'll, we'll me to too. Me too. I'm so hyped for that. <laughs> Gears 5, yes. Yes. Should be good. But it's understandable that Fortnite would win this category. Not uh, There's a lot of people out there who can't stand. I didn't know there was. I'm sorry. I didn't know there was sandbox stuff. I'm sorry, Baggy. Explain for me, please. Short of cooldowns. You already did better, better DJK, stronger abilities. <laughs> Got you. Okay. See, this is stuff I don't know since I'm just now like getting into the game after the fact. So I didn't know that was a thing before that wasn't a thing. Wow. <laughs> a mm-hmm. thing before a thing with a thing that does the thing. How many times can I say the word thing? Mm-hmm. So next one on but that though. Fortnite. Yeah, Fortnite. And it, it, go, it goes back to what we were talking about before, the fact that they keep adding, you know, they're, they're always adding more to each season. Um, the map does not stay the same. Mm-mm. They have a storyline that's going with it. Yep. They add vehicles. They add weapons. They change the weapons. Um, they add in different... Um, cosmetics. The skins, cosmetics really. Cosmetics. And emotes. And just... Exactly. There's a lot that they add to allow people to go, wow, and keep people's interest. And get people to want to play again. Because even if they maybe aren't don't play for a little while... Mm-hmm. you know they'll see like i don't know how many people probably haven't seen the plane thing until now and they're like oh my gosh i'm gonna need to go check this out and so they start playing again uh-huh. so it totally makes sense for Fortnite, in my opinion uh-huh. not that i agree like it because it's not my favorite game uh-huh. but it makes sense they're best ongoing um game direction so basically um how well how it was, was put it together told? How it was told, how it was put together. Your nominees was A Way Out. Uh, the game, was, that was an interesting game. That was the prison. A cool game. way, but it didn't really do that well because of right. like well, it was, connection it was in certain ways. Yep. Detroit Become Human, which was a cool game. Marvel, Spider-Man, Red Dead, and God of War, which won for a direction. Best game direction. I never felt so many emotions within one full gameplay. Sadness, Including anger, happiness, depression, just everything. <laughs> Sometimes all at once. Um, I'm now, frustrated. 
to go along with that is best narrative, so the storyline itself. Now, this is what, what's interesting. So we have Red Dead, Detroit Become Human, God of War, Life is Strange 2, Episode 1. Not just Life is Strange 2, but only Episode 1. Episode 1. And Marvel <laughs> Spider-Man. So the rest of them were crap? And the the one that won was Red Dead Redemption. Now, you just finished Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. And have completed the story. How do you feel about Red Dead Redemption winning best narrative over something like Detroit Become Human or God of War? Um, Red Dead, I felt like I was on the worst roller coaster ride I've ever been on. Like I paid too much money, but I didn't get my hype in it. You know, we went up and up and up and up. And the, the, the actual like drop was like two feet. Woo! We're done. We're done here. Um, I didn't really, I, I felt that moments it did tell it really well. Um, but they really had an issue with how, with the fillers. Like you remember the one scene towards the end of it, we were all like, Oh, and it was just ruined because all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, we have to stop time to shoot. It's like, wait a minute. Whoa. We, we were just going to like hit the, the greatest moment in the game in the story. And we just, we just stopped because of, sh we need to have a shootout. I just, I feel like the it game feel really weird. It, it, it's the story is cliche. It's cliche, the way to put it. Yes, it is cliche. It is told well, though. Um, so even though you might know what happens, you're going through and you're like, oh, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, and most likely they will happen, but they tell it well enough that at least keeps you pushing. Not, not to the point where you're like, man, I can't wait to see what happens, but enough like, all right, what's next, you know? So I don't think it should have won best narrative. Um, I could see... I, I in my mind I can see why I just don't personally think it should have won right, best narrative right. because it didn't have me go whoa that was whoa like yeah. I didn't I didn't leave certain areas with my jaw dropped I left certain areas with like damn that sucks <laughs> and see I haven't seen um, anything with Life is Strange two at all. Um, I know with the first Life is Strange, the narrative in that was beautiful, beautifully told. Yeah. Um, so I am curious to maybe go back and check out Life is Strange 2 um, to see that, because I've seen bits and pieces of all of these games, except for that one. Um, <clears throat> but I think, I don't know, I, I would like to see more of the story with Detroit Become Human. I think they could have it was a beautiful game that they could have maybe told more. Yeah, people say that certain paths that you did told the story really well, but then there were certain paths that were like, they felt rushed or not finished or so. So I think it's all determining on like what the path you go through when you're playing it. For sure, for sure. Um, and guys, feel free to jump in and talk about any of these games, whether you agree with them winning, if you thought one of the others should have won, why, if there was a different game that wasn't included that should have been. What was your favorite game? What did you like and why? All right, I want to essay right now on the table. You got it? Right there. Thank you. Okay, Professor Rambo has spoken. Yeah. Um, <laughs> best art direction. Um, Return of Oberdin won that one. I, it's not a game I'm familiar with. Have you seen anything of this Oberdin? Oh, didn't Anyone? know. I, I, I personally haven't. I looked up some stuff, but I haven't heard much of it. Destiny 2 should have won all the categories. I do not disagree, Baggy. I, I personally, with the art direction, I chose Octopath Traveler. It was beautiful. Because I like the way they did, and they went towards that mm -hmm. old-fashioned Final Fantasy pixelized way, which is really cool. Yep. So I liked it because they went a different path than like what others did. God of War was like too realistic. Red Dead too realistic. Assassin's Creed Odyssey tried to be realistic. Return to Oberdin was like was a different coloration, different style, and so was Octopath. So I felt that they sh either Octopath or they should have um, been the they should have been the ones. That makes sense. I can just, see why. Just just because while God of War, Red Dead, and Assassin's Creed are visually beautiful because they are so realistic and they bring that atmosphere. They mm -hmm. don't bring anything new to the art direction scene, in my opinion. When I when I want someone to win, I want them to win because their their path something was unique. Different. Their path was different. Their path on that art was you know vibrant or detailed and just totally something you wouldn't expect. 
Right, right. That makes sense. This I want to skip down. Sword. Does punctuation <laughs> count? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, Jono, it does. Grammar and punctuation and spelling. Yes, make sure you capitalize. Skip down on our list of best performance. Um, who was your favorite characters throughout this year of games? Um, the nominees, we had Roger Clark playing as Arthur in Red Dead. Brian Deshart, Descartes, I don't know how to say his name, as Connor in Detroit Become Human. Christopher Judge as Kratos in God of War. That's his favorite. Boy. Melisanthi Mahout as Cassandra in Assassin's Creed. And then we had um, Yuri Lowenthal as Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. So who, like, you loved Christopher Judge. I think he did a fantastic job. Um, I just, I love that voice. Like, if I could have a voice, I wish it was Christopher Judge, all right? Oh, just it's a memorable voice. And just like, go, you know, damn, that is sexy. You know it's him. It is now, a sexy voice. Roger Clark is Arthur one. Yes. Why do you think he won over, say, Christopher Judge? Uh, because his character and everything with it was very vibrant. Christopher Judge has an epic mm -hmm. voice, and it plays so well with Kratos. But I do understand that, because with it, Kratos was very monotone through it. Boy. Boy. I mean, he does have anger and everything, but he never really played much of a different emotion towards that. Instead That's of still fair. and anger or so. Where Roger Clark's character played many he was quiet. He was excited. He was anger, angry. He was, you know, he frustrated. He, he, was he played through so many emotions in the tone of his voice and how he felt. You, playing through it, you did feel it with him. He did a well yep. job in he uh, did bring making the character life. He did. He he brought he brought Arthur to life, and that was really one of the great great things on it. So, I could see why he won. Besides. Um, instead of Christopher Judge, just because mm -hmm. the emotions he played was better told than uh, Christopher Judge. But Christopher Judge's voice is fucking outstanding. For sure. You, you know him for sure. Um, another category was Best Independent Game, Best Indie. Mm. We had Celeste. Where's our game developers? Where you at? Right. We have some game devs in the community now, which we'll talk more about here in a bit. Um, Celeste, Dead Cells, Into the Breach, Return of the Oprah Din, and The Messenger. Um, Celeste won, and I haven't played it yet. I've been super interested in it because it I might have, have to play it. I did pick it up. I just haven't played it yet. Um, it's beautiful. I have seen screenshots of it, and I know that they've included some stuff in there to try to help with um, accessibility, which I appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know that it's the best way, but at least they tried, so I appreciate that. Um, and I, I think it's it's really cool to see Celeste. They also won Best Game for Impact against things like 11-11 Memories Retold. So you know your feelers are going to be feeling something if you play that yeah, game. Yeah, it, it, it's going to, to affect you. There's there's an impact to it with the game. So which... make sure if anyone is streaming it, I think uh, Muse will be streaming it at some point. Um, Most likely. I, I might hit it up. Uh, if you jo <laughs> come into any of those streams, make sure you bring a box of tissues. All right. Any game I not for you, game, not for you, for for games. us, for us, for the streamer. All right, because we need the box of tissues. We'll get smart. We're throwing. What we going on? Not ugly. I can't see no problem. <laughs> I'm not crying. You are. That's him, not me. I just, just tears. Um, the best mobile. So here's an interesting Fortnite, PUBG were listed, and a lot of people have been talking about them and their accessibility because they're mobile games but there was also things called games called donut county reigns which i played i played reigns um the original reigns on pc um but this one's reigns game of thrones which was the one uh oh. one of the nominees and but the winner was florence so which is florence is a um like a graphic novel game on um on mobile, which I think is really interesting that something like a, uh, a game that tells a story won over something with a following like PUBG or Fortnite on mobile. Nice. Um, this, this category I, it really excites me. So best action game. We have Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Good, good Destiny game. Destiny 2. Amazing game. Far Cry 5, Mega Man 11, and Dead Cells. 
Now, here's the really cool thing for those who don't know. Dead Cells is the one that won. Dead Cells is an indie game that beat out AAA Studios for best action game. I think this is so I can see why. freaking cool. It's an awesome action game. Um, I, I played that, a, I played a little bit on stream. Great viewer game, viewer interaction, but it is tough. It is action packed, and there's a lot to it. And it is yep. a roguelike as well. So if you like roguelikes, it's your game, and you like interacting with your chat and whatnot, and having them participate. It is an outstanding game, an outstanding game, and not too far off a lot of people's styles. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic, and just the fact that an indie dev. So you guys out there, you can do it. You can beat these big AAA studios. Mm -hmm. Show them what it's about, because that's just amazing. Heck yeah. Um, I want to... <laughs> Since want... we're talking about Smash, it's not oh. listed here, obviously, but Best Family Game, Overcooked 2, Mario Tennis Aces, Nintendo Labo, Starlink, uh, Battle for Atlas, and Super Mario Party. Overcooked 2 won, which I think is hilarious. Where's the lamb sauce? <laughs> because... Mm. It won Best Family Game, but I can't help but think that it's also the best family game to ruin a family. It, de it doesn't bring families together. It brings families apart. <laughs> you didn't put the sushi in the order. You didn't cook I the rice. Why you do the dishes? <laughs> <laughs> like, I just think that's hilarious. Was there a category that you wanted to cover? Oh, I wanted to cover VR. Oh, I'm a little yes. bit triggered by this. I'm a little bit upset. I'm a little messed up. Um, best VR games, there was Astrobot Rescue Mission, Beat Saber, Firewall Zero Hour, Moss, and Tetris Effect. Astro Rescue Mission won VR, which I am blown away. I thought Beat Saber would won. Those of you who've watched my stream and everything, Beat Saber is an outstanding game. It's like Dance Dance Revolution with lightsabers, all right? You have a red saber and a blue saber, and it blows around and everything. It does that. It is an outstanding, outstanding um, game. And you can mod it and do it to what you like. So I'm actually surprised that it didn't win. It... I'm surprised, too. I was definitely surprised by that. Have you played any of these others? Have you played Astrobot? Or no, I don't other? have them on my list. But okay. I, I have seen stuff, and I was, I'm just I'm so blown away by it. That it is a thing. Um, what was it? There was another one that I want. You covered the Dead Cells because I wanted that. Um, yep. Best fighting game. This actually is interesting. Um, there was in the list Dragon Ball Fighters, uh, Blaze Blue, uh, Cross Tag Battle, Soul Calibur Six, and um, Street Fighter Five. Uh, Dragon Ball actually won, which I I, I, I am extremely happy B -B about. Um. It has been out a little longer than Blaze Blue and Soul Calibur, but not as long as Street Fighter. Although Street Fighter has kind of fallen down in a plummet right now, and everyone's bashing it because of its online and everything and how it's just not doing well. Um, Dragon Ball is a great, great s style towards it and it, how they do because um, it's a 2D platform fight, side-by-side -side fighting, but with a 3D style to it. And it's action-packed and a really good outstanding fighter game. Um, I heavily enjoyed it. It's it's great. So I'm actually happy that they that it won. So That's any of you cool. fighter guys out there, you like Dragon Ball? <laughs> Take note. If you like it, Blaze Blue is awesome for fighting like crazy on PC. Maybe that's one that you need to check out for your for yourself there, sir. Dorito recommends it highly. So. I have. Connor has it. I have played it. It is oh. a good game itself. It is a great game. He has it on Switch. Oh, nice. But I'm talking about the VR version. Isn't it? Doesn't it have a VR? No. Never no. mind. I'm losing my mind. I'm going to stop talking. It's like Guilty Other Gear style. Best sports, because you guys are talking WWE in in uh, in chat right now. Um, none of the WWE game, there wasn't one, but in the listing for this year's awards was Forza Horizon 4, FIFA 19, Mario Tennis Aces, NBA 2K19 and Pro Evolution Soccer with Forza being the winner. Um, I'm not big into a lot of sports games. I have played Forza because I do love cars and I love racing. And Forza is beautiful, great music, great cars. So I'm fine with that one being a winner. That's all I got to say. But I don't... That sounds like an ad for like something. 
<laughs> Forza Horizon 4. Great music, great cars, great women. Buy it today. Like I said nothing about the women. No. I, I... <laughs> Best multiplayer game. So as you can imagine, um, Fortnite. Fortnite. Call of, <laughs> Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Destiny 2. Monster Hunter World and Sea of Thieves. Well, I'm, surprised, I'm, Fortnite. I'm surprised Monster Hunter got put in that selection. It is. Um, it is kind and of surprising. Siege they wasn't? Have, they have, <laughs> there is that multiplayer aspect to Monster Hunter that maybe, I guess, is a bigger deal than what I've seen. Yeah. I haven't seen a lot of people getting super involved in that as a multiplayer. Uh, I only put like 40 hours into that game and um, didn't do much. Sea of Thieves is a really cool game with a lot of multiplayer. That's that's to... impact on multiplayer. That literally is just multiplayer. Mm -hmm. Destiny 2, I'm kind of surprised in ways because for me, and what I love about Destiny 2 is you can start um, a public event and people will come together to play whether or not you know, you're not going through all of it together, but you complete that particular thing together. And I just think that's a really cool aspect in multiplayer. Yeah, it is great. Um, so I was surprised it didn't... I guess, you know, Fortnite's in there, and Fortnite is Fortnite. And well, Fortnite, Fortnite was going to win any multiplayer thing just because it is so big. And that actually is because of Ninja. True. He promoted true. that like no other and blew up on that, which ended up helping the growth of Fortnite immensely. This is true. Um, and he also was the one... Speaking of <laughs> Ninja, he got best... Or uh, the content creator, creator of the year. year. Which, does um, you remember, is kind of funny... Dr. Disrespect got cre game, uh, content creator of the year. That dude's personality is the complete opposite of per se Ninja. And so it's funny how he, he Ninja won that. And that's just because of numbers. He got that because yep. of it. Um, I was actually I was actually surprised some names were in there. I, I figured Dr. Lupa would get in there. Right. Um, yep. I figured Myth. Um, Willie Rex, I don't know much of. But I was surprised Pokimane got in there. I, I was surprised to see that name there as well. I have to say, I've yeah. watched Pokimane stream, and she, I don't I don't know I don't know about what about it. Like she, I, I don't find her entertaining. Now, some people might, and that's that's all of you. But I just personally I I found her boring. She was when I was watching her, she was sitting there ranting on something of like that was not on topic, and she was just. She was bad at Fortnite. Let's, let's be honest. She was bad at it. Well, maybe that's no hate towards anything, but she was just she was a bad day. She was just bad. But you know, I don't care for Ninja. Either. I don't care for him. Like either. I don't watching him, but he does put a lot of content out there. He does have a lot of people that enjoy his content. He is good at what he does. So, but he's not my cup of tea. He is very good. Yeah. So, you know, it, it wins. Um, I don't know if we have anybody that follows esports a lot, but um, the esports game that won for this year's Overwatch. It beat out Counter Strike uh, Global Offensive. Well, CSGO is dying, and everyone knows that. Dota 2 it beat out in Fortnite and League of Legends. Um, so that, I, I'm surprised Dota 2 maybe didn't take it, considering. Um, yeah. But that's that's just me. And then the esports team that won is Cloud9. That is true. Everybody, everybody knows Cloud9. Yep. That's true, though. Um, he is getting his own show on Sirius XM and uh, Diplo Radio. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah, so that's kind of the basic rundown of the VGAs. They had different categories. Uh, they had other, you know, people that um, who did things that won things. Um, sorry, I was reading, trying to read chat and think at the same time. It didn't work. Baggy's talking about poking me and thinks she's a strong woman empowerment, strong for woman empowerment. So that's her thing. You know, that's true. that's not a bad thing. And no, that's true. it's not. She she does have her name out there, um, and showing women that women can do Absolutely. things and be there, which is really cool to see. I mean, if you do look at the rest, she was the only female in the uh, and any any here. any most of the stuff. Yeah, she was. So you know, it's that's a huge hype. On good that. on her. Good on her. That is awesome. Um, not to get into that side of things, obviously, but um, it is good to see more diversity of all types. Just heard them right. promoting it when you're driving home from work tonight. Don't follow him, but it feels practically everyone else does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's been he's on a become... lot of shows. He he was on recent things. He was on a thing with it with a uh, little yachty. 
he was doing stuff and streaming and playing uh, games with Lil Yachty a while back. Wasn't, didn't he working on Ellen and stuff too? Yep, he was on Ellen as well. Yeah, he's he's just he's promoting it. He's getting out there and he's becoming more of a household name, which for content creator of the year they should be more of a household name. He's a Logan Paul of Twitch. Yeah. If you think of it, I can see that. Logan Paul blew up immensely, did so much stuff and whatnot and everything. We're just waiting for the the, the cookie crumble. <laughs> the cookie to crumble. Um, all right. So, yeah, that brings us to the end of our VGAs and our gaming news. Um, some quick announcements. As for all, the folks. TV. Not quite all. Hold on there. Ah! Porky. Porky the big guy. <laughs> some announcements for the community. The first big one is this weekend. Saturday is our double tournament day, guys. We have Fortnite and Rocket League going on. This was set Fortnite up by Mars. From Mars Echelon, our beautiful moderator and tourney arranger. Um, Fortnite <laughs> will start at 2 p.m. Eastern time. It will be uh, hosted, casted by Prismac and uh, Duke Lyman. My brain paused. I apologize, Duke. For the lemon. Um, and then 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is going to be the, the start for Rocket League. And we have uh, MTD Robin and Bloodhaven86, who will be casting that. Should be a great show. Those two know that oh, game very well. Um, and it will be very energetic. So hang on to your booties for that one. Um, if you have not checked... Mars has posted um, teams and everything already in their respective channel, so please, please, please check that out. Um, if you signed up solo for any of those and don't know who you're playing with, you should probably figure it out. Start adding each other. Um, get some pra practice in, maybe, the thought. Um, and please be ready to go at those respective times for the games. Um, whether you're doing one or both, um, be ready to go to a bit. Um, it can flow smoothly. The next quick announcement is our Jackbox Community Night. Um, oh, Patrick. Yes, Baggy reminded me. Guys, if your name is Patrick and you signed up to be part of the tournament, would you please let us know who you are? Patrick, where are you? We just who are Patrick you? We don't know who. Where are you? <laughs> where is she? Where is she? <laughs> so please, please, Patrick. Whoever you are, wherever you are, please check in with us. Um, the next community event Patrick after the tourneys <laughs> is going to be a Jackbox uh, night hosted Ooh. by, right here on this channel, hosted by Dorito. Um, and it's going to be not this Friday, but the Friday after. So Friday, the, what is that, the 21st? My bad chat. Be on the 21st. It should be a good time. Uh, Dorito's awesome. Quick other couple things I want to talk about. Merch. Um, we do have merch. Some people don't realize this, but we do as a community custom merch that you can check out. Um, I'm not wearing it because I'm poor. I'm... Get on it, man. I'm sorry. Um, I'm wearing one of the jerseys. Want to send me one? Not, <laughs> not part of this um, set of merch. but you Show are that sexy merch off. We're looking to add show the merch. As well. I, well, this isn't. This isn't. Just this show isn't, it. <laughs> See? It has our logo. It's got the logo um, and everything. But it's done by B Disastrous. It's a great collection of <laughs> jewelry, of clothing. Oh my god, my brain is starting to fry. Um, and as I was trying to say, we are looking to add things that were of more interest to you. So if you go and you check it out and you don't see something you want there let us know what it is you want we had somebody say hey i would really love to have a twitch crew mouse pad well guess what you can get mouse pads now so um what size we can make it uh they're just the regular mouse pad not the best mouse pads. sorry i know a guy Rigged. Yeah. but we do that's the thing we know a guy we have a guy uh splice we are a guy uh splice speaks i'm still our buddy splice jeff can get it done so um let us know if there's something you want that's not there. In addition, we also have recently started a collaboration between indie devs and streamers. So if you're a streamer who loves indie games or are interested in helping devs showcase their games, 
and you have not yet filled out the form, there is a form that can be found in the pinned section of the Indie Dev Collaboration um, page. Please, please, please fill that out. Once you fill that out, you will get a specific role that allows you into a different channel that will let you communicate with the devs directly. Um, and it's a it's a win-win. The devs get to showcase their game, and they get to bring, they can help bring people to your stream to check out the game. So yep. it's a win-win. Um, definitely give it a thought. There's a lot of different types of devs. We've got people who do roguelikes, puzzles, deck builders, um, you name it. There's probably a dev for it in the community. So food for thought, please, please, please do that. And if any of you devs are hanging out out there and have not filled out the form either, please fill out the <laughs> the form for the devs. And you do get, I mean, they're willing to give you free games, as Baggy saying. Um, it's kind free of game. Thank you for helping. You if know, you it's free, to... it's for me. And it's not just about getting the free games, guys. I mean, that's that's definitely a bonus. It's a big thing. But, but it's not the main um, thing. The, the last thing I want to quickly touch on, we now have the ability to help bring sponsors into your stream. Um, in order to do that, though, we need you to um, become part of our quest mode team. Um, the information bag, you did a wonderful post. You can check it out in the announcements. Keep doing that. Um, in, in the page there on the Discord. Um, basically, if you want to help make money and help the community make money, you can definitely um, become part of this quest mode through quest mode. You do simply do quests. That's exactly what it is, what it sounds like. You can do different quests to, first of all, become part of the team, the Twitch group community team. And it's really simple stuff. It's like making sure you're following our Twitter. Where can we find this? Our Twitch page. Um, it's all in the in the information category on our Discord under the announcements. You scroll up. Check it out. Part of a scroll. You like and the game? You like the game promotion recognition? Here. Certain things? Do Let it. Let me even do this. Let me even do this, y'all. I'm going to be super fancy. Ready? Copy. Paste. Um, that will take you directly to signing up and doing beginning the steps to become part of the team. Um, oh, you can, also, you can also set it up for your own community so that your viewers can do different quests that you can help set up things like, uh, <laughs> Baggy says do it or else. Or else what, Noodles? What are you going to do? Um, banned. No, just kidding. Okay. Um, Bye, guys. You can set it up so your viewers can literally do really easy quests, like just playing a game. There are certain games that are listed. Um, starting a Hulu subscription, it gives them points, and those points, if you get enough points, you can get free subs that you can give to oh. whoever you want to give to. So there's a lot of benefit for everyone involved, your viewers, you, and us as a community. Um, so food for thought, definitely check it out. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to get a hold of uh, any of us, Baggy, myself, um, Mars, Eddie, when he gets back from Jamaica. Um, and we'll we'll help you out best we can with it. So those are my announcements for um, for tonight. I want to thank everybody for coming and hanging out with us. You've all been great. Oh, no. Um, Kitty. Oh, that's awesome. Kitty, thank you. She says, I've been with Quest Mode for a long time and can speak from experience. It is very worth it to the streamer. That's awesome. So... Thank you for that. Um, it's definitely, they're, they're, you don't have to do anything to sign up for it. I mean, and a lot of the games are like games that you might be playing on your mobile phone anyway, um, or online, or it's, it's simple stuff, guys. It's super simple. Um, and if you get free subs to your favorite streamers, why not? Why not? Um, allows viewers who can't donate to you or sub to you to be able to, for free, they can give time to give free tips that's exactly that's awesome give a little that bit is of time outstanding and they can give you tips as well this is that's a good point it's not just subs that you get they get points for they can actually if they follow enough steps within their quest for whatever quest that they choose you can actually give a donation a monetary donation to your streamer that's cool so it's, it's a very worth cool it story. guys it's worth it look into it you need it you very want it so. you know it you do you do so thanks guys so much for hanging out um, we will not be back in two weeks because it's the Wednesday after Christmas. We're so going on vacation, a, BB. 
basically. We're going to be spending time with family, as I'm sure all of you will be. Um, so we will return in January. The 9th of January will be our next crew talk uh, visit. And um, you can expect to see more information. If you have anything that you would love for us to talk about, please let us know. You can get a hold of me. You can get a hold of Rambo. Um, Harry Wizard will be joining us as a reminder, so we will have three. Hold my close, don't let me go. Um, I mean, you can hold him close if you want. That's fine. Free hugs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know there's been a request for internet security and privacy stuff, so we'll definitely be covering that soon. Um, but if there's anything out there that you, you would like to hear about, even if we don't know about it, we can find a person who does. And, and do our best. And do our best to help with those topics so um this guy is i am rambo where can they find you you can find me on mixer <laughs> totally don't stream this site no okay you guys can find me on twitch.tv forward slash i am rambo all underscores underneath it's long you can see it in a tag here you can see it in the link in chat um i'm a full-time variety broadcaster i stream seven days a week 5 p.m. Eastern to whenever I feel like stopping. So if you guys want to tune in, hang out, you can throw that follow. But where can they find you, Muse? Um, here, mainly. No, you <laughs> I also, I'm starting to stream again, twitch.tv slash music show, as you can see. Um, and it's the music show on Twitter because some lame person has just the regular music show and hasn't tweeted since like 2013. But anyway, that's a whole nother story. She's great. Um, you should follow her. We hope to see you guys soon in the discord if you're not part of the community do join in um it's a great bunch like i said join to become a member stay for family as you become family um we are going to let me double check i believe she's live our featured member of the week Geekasaurus Geekasaurus is live. and to say hi we are going to go over and we're going to rate her because uh she is featured member and she's amazing and we love her dearly so we're going to show her some love so get those um Raid emotes ready to go. She's playing some Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. That's awesome. Well, we'll see you guys in the next one. Talk to you later.